You're about to see some really important clips, sections of a speech that Colonel Craig Roberts gave in Kansas City at a presentation I was putting on in 2003. Colonel Craig Roberts was a highly decorated Marine Corps sniper in Vietnam and subsequently wrote a best-selling book, One Shot, One Kill, uh, detailing what happened there. Later in life, he became a member of Army Intelligence. Uh, he also worked as a detective uh, on the Tulsa, Oklahoma Police Department and worked the Oklahoma City bombing case. Colonel Roberts is an expert on the New World Order, and his insights give us a view into the mind of the globalist thinkers and to many aspects of the crimes they've committed. Here's Colonel Roberts. Where are we at now? The final target is the American people. And who benefits on the Hegelian principle? Remember, the greatest fear of attack has a stronger anti-terrorism bill every time. Now, the way it works out, the difference between communism and Fabian socialism is communism says, kick in the door, shove a gun in their face, and tell them, be a communist or die. Real quick. Fabian socialism says, knock on the door and put one foot in the living room, Talk your way into putting the second foot in the living room until you own the whole house. You do it by legislating your way there a little bit at a time. It's called the frog in the pot. It's called incrementalism. It's called the inchworm effect, where the inchworm feels out, it feels resistance, it backs up and moves around the object. Uh, incrementalism is, I come to you and I say, I want to take all your house. And you say, you can't have all my house, but I'll let you stay in my front yard. I'll compromise. Okay, that's fair enough. A week later, I want your front porch. I'm not going to give you my front porch, but you can have the steps. See? This is what happens when we get at the national level in Washington, D.C. For those of you who haven't figured it out yet, the National Democratic Party was taken over by the Communist Party of the USA back in the 1960s. They infiltrated their members to the very top, and they have Fabian socialists there. Okay? They've got a few scholars, but mostly Fabian socialists that want to incrementalize our way into globalism and the New World Order and all of this. The Republican Party, uh, in its mass confusion, probably has a few in there too, but I think mainly they're just dumb because they haven't figured it out yet, or if they figured it out, they go along with the flow anyway. But the Republican Party's deal is we had to compromise. Remember that all through the Clinton administration, every time they want to pass some obscene law, the, Dem uh, the Republicans say, well, we had to compromise with the Brady Bill. We had to compromise and meet them halfway. No, you don't ever compromise. We didn't sit you there to compromise, we sent you there to say no, to draw a line in the sand. We don't compromise. Because compromise allows the enemy to advance at least halfway, and they ask for the rest tomorrow. So the Hegelian effect is, you don't want to do it. You don't want to compromise, so we're going to make you want to do it with brain, uh, with mind control, and we're going to do it by scaring you and telling you it's going to hurt your kids, it's going to hurt you, whatever. They create a scenario, and you buy off on it. So we end up with uh, stronger anti-terrorism bills, which are basically anti-constitute and run around the Constitution. We've got uh, prohibit the private ownership of guns eventually. Right now, the Ninth Circuit's already come out and said that gun ownership is not an individual right. It's a privilege given by the government. Folks, there's a big difference between rights and privileges. Privileges are given by uh, the government. Rights are something you have they can't take away. And they're trying to redefine which is which. And they're trying to move the gun rights into the gun privileges. And we can't let them do that. Somebody asked me once, well, Roberts, what's your, what's your tripwire? What's your line in the sand? When do you actually do more than just speak? Well, I'll tell you what. If I ever see a Chinese guy driving down my road with a blue hat, he's going to wish he didn't come there. <laughs> Now, I may be slow, and I may be old, and maybe I don't see as far as I used to, but I got a heck of a good trigger finger. Okay. Prohibit private ownership of guns. Establish a national ID system for what? For tracking purposes. They can't control people if they don't know who they are and where they're at. You've got to identify everybody before and register them before you can control them. And they've got to make more. And it's really hard for them to do this. But it's real easy for you to be convinced that they've done it i.e., oh, I've got a social security number, they can find me anywhere. I've got a driver's license number, they can find me anywhere. I've got this, they can find me anywhere. Wrong well, answer. It's like trying to drink water out of a fire hose. Get up on an airplane, look down at the city, and try to figure out how you're going to track all those people with all the computers in the world. It ain't going to be done. You can't be done. Over a period of time, they'll find you. Okay, they have ways of doing that. If you spend money, if you do anything, yeah, if you try to move from one place to another eventually. I mean, property taxes alone. I mean, everybody registers for property. You know, unless you live in a tent in the back of a park someplace. Uh, so, why run? 
and why care? Stand up and say, hey, the buck stops here, lines in the sand, and you have a problem with me, let's just, let's just get it fixed. And if everybody did that, Alexander Souls and Mason said this, when the organs came in the middle of the night, if we'd lift them in the stairwells with clubs and with knives, sooner or later they would run out of agents and we would not have gone to the gulags. Establish a national police force. They're doing that right now by cross-deputizing all of the police. Uh, and these young officers out there, you got to remember, police officers are good guys. The problem is we're getting a young bunch in there to come out of the public school system and go through the socialist college system. Why does a police officer have to have a college degree? Because it puts him in socialist, left-wing college classrooms. And they say, if you have a degree in sociology, that's fine for the police department. Or, of course, you can be a lawyer or you can be, you know, they give you some other choices. You know, if you come out of there and you've got a degree in horseshoeing or something, obviously that's not going to work. But they want you to have something like that. But what does that do? That builds a base of young recruits. Someday guys like me who, uh, you know, have our head above the water are gone, and the young, young ones come up, and they're into this. Guns are bad. The New World Order and globalism is good. And I get to be a federal agent with a cross-deputy deal. Isn't this cool? And they're paying me more money because I got a college degree. It's a mind control deal for the young. And when the young, older officers are gone and we can't explain to them, we got some problems here. We need to talk about things like what does the Constitution say that you took an oath to, like Jack McLean does to them, then I don't know what's going to happen. So I deal with officers all the time. I stay in contact with them. I drop by the lodge. I visit them. I stop the street you know, and talk to them. Of course, I don't know who I am. I'm kind of a legend in my own mind over there. But um, in, my, in my neck of the woods. But, that's all you can do. You do what you can do. That's all, it's, that's all you're expected to do. Let me tell you something. Don't sit there taking the information and do nothing. If you want to be, I'm a patriotic couch potato, then you're wasting your time and mine too. Okay? You've got to educate at least one or two other people and they need to do the same thing. America is the last bastion. The globalists know that to establish an effective global government, no private individuals can be permitted to own or bear private firearms. There must be no chance of resistance or rebellion. The population of every country on the planet must be disarmed, followed by their police forces and local military organizations. The National Guard is going to get disarmed. The police are going to get disarmed. And how do we know this? It's happened in all over the whole world, and we're the last ones left. Do you know who the only populations that have guns left besides us? Iraqis, PLO, Libyans, terrorist organizations. Now, when only the terrorists have guns, what is that going to mean? Okay? So the biggest thing is, if we meekly do what the Aussies and the New Zealanders and the Brits and the Canadians have done, we deserve what we get. They're going to legislate the gun, guns away by fear, create fear by using events in the media, have legislation ready to pass that reduces or eliminates firearms in the hands of the citizens. How many can you own? How, how big are the magazines? Pretty soon it's going to be single shot, then it's going to be, we got to get rid of certain categories and classes of weapons. How about... A multiple projectile weapon of mass destruction. The shotgun. How about the preferred weapon of the assassin? The 22. How about the sniper class weapons? Anything with a scope on it? Pretty soon you got them all. 